Hey guys, Chris back here from CNH Small Engine again. We've got another quick video here for you guys today. We got a machine here, a customer brought to us about two days ago. This is a uh, newer uh, generation of Husqvarna machines over here. This is about a year and a half old. Apparently, the uh, customer told me he said it was at least a year old because he bought it supposedly back in, I think, middle of uh, 20, I think it was like 2017, or late 2017, somewhere around there. So it's at least a year and a half old. And we'll do a quick review here for you for the actual machine. Uh, the customer didn't really need hardly any work done to it. He's wanted the typical tune up on the machine. So he also wanted to have it checked out prior to the season, make sure there wasn't any kind of serious problems or running issues with it as well, too. So we'll give you a review from the top down of the machine here as well. This has the uh, GCV. 160 Honda engine on here as it has on the top of the actual recoil unit right here on the GCV 160. This machine is designated as Husqvarna L221A specifically and this has the Honda overhead cam engine on here. You have your overhead cam right here. This is your cam underneath here as well too so this is the OHC engine overhead cam. This machine also has the newer um, auto choke system on here as well too. I uh, personally like this design myself because it's a lot easier to um, you know, take apart, clean out, and um, you know take it apart and clean out and put it back on a machine because these things seem to be lasting longer than the older style design out here for that. So this thing has the ACS auto choke system on here as well too. Uh, the good thing about this thing is uh, the auto choke system on here is relatively easy to take off. You simply take the air box off here and take the carb off and you take the, the black plastic um, air or auto choke system off or you take it, up, take it, take it off. Uh, you put it in an ultrasonic George tank, clean it up, blow it off and put some lube on the, all the um, contact moving points on and put it back on the machine. And nine times out of ten, it should function okay after you do that if the thing has any kind of you know debris or build up or some kind of crap stuck on it because we see a lot of guys over here that uh, they're out there cutting their grass and they like slam their um, engine into some kind of a bush or a shrub or something like that on there and you get crap stuck up on the top on here for that and a machine doesn't want to uh, start up properly or the auto choke will stay open when it should stay closed or it'll stay closed when it should be opening or it might only be opening partially you might have to pull it multiple times to have the machine starting properly so that's one nifty feature about the newer designs where you can take them off relatively easy clean uh, clean them up put them back on the machine and then it should typically start up in like maybe one or two pulls out there specifically for that so that's what it is for the auto choke system on this machine and this machine is a all-wheel drive unit on here they have that's clearly marked in the front right here you got all-wheel drive so it's awd all-wheel drive you have two transmissions on this thing or two gearboxes whatever you want to call them you have one transmission up front right here under your cover and you have one transmission in the back as well too you have your secondary transmission in the back that your uh, drive cable goes to right here. You have a drive cable that it engages and disengages the actual transmission up on the uh, rear handle up here. This is your handle assembly right here. You pull this back and that engages and disengages your transmission. This is a newer design. They do not have the um, uh, inline adjustment uh, portion on here. This is the newer, cheaper model that does not have a adjustment feature actually built into the actual cable right here. So that's one uh, difference they have from the older generation ones out there. So there is no adjustment whatsoever you can do with the actual cable assembly. And we'll give you a shot of the actual side of the engine right here. Here's your shot side of the engine right here. Got the ACS auto choke system on here. Plus you also have your good old um, fuel shutoff valve as well too on here. So I do recommend using these things at the end of the season in order to prevent any kind of gas going down inside the carb to uh, possibly clog it up. So you have your markings right here for your pictogram for your shutting off and turning on of the actual fuel system. So it is currently in the on position right now. If you want to turn it in the off position, you get to rotate it up just like so. That's the off position. You want to turn it back on turn on as it is right there specifically for that here's a shot of the actual identification tag of the machine right down here you have the model number clearly listed as l221 a the product maintenance level is product number 961450038000 the serial number starts with 032 and the width of the cut is 21 as well too. So let me get a better shot here. 
try to zoom in here for you guys. There you go. It looks a little bit better now for you. Sorry about that. And we'll go ahead and flip the machine up here in the air, and you can actually see the trans or the um, uh, deck assembly with the uh, transmission and uh, transmission drive units as well too. So here's what your deck looks like underneath here. This is the newer generation model out here. The older models do not have uh, this type of uh, baffle system underneath here. This is a 2017 or 2017 and a half. Uh, the older designs. Uh, this whole entire area was like covered up with a big black baffle area So this whole area was basically covered like like that on here the newer malls uh, They left them more open here So it's easier to um, you know get to the belt system underneath here in your poise So it's a lot easier to clean it out and uh, Simply maintain the actual deck assembly plus also the actual poise and the belt keepers and stuff like that as well, too So here's your front drive unit right here you have your transmission up here in the front. You have one transmission right in the front right here attached to your uh, drive shaft right here. Uh, this transmission does not pivot. This thing is basically stuck in a uh, tensioned uh, position the whole entire time. So it's under constant tension right here. Uh, your back transmission is not the same. Your back one, your back transmission back here, this thing pivots. I'll show you that. This thing goes up and down just like so. And that en engages by having your... Uh, cable and your uh, rear bell control back to engage right there for that so whenever you want to engage your transmission in the back you simply pull up on her and then it tightens up the actual belt and it puts proper tension on the actual transmission drive belt right here for that uh, one thing I get asked over here by people is uh, how long or how many times should I uh, you know call um, or you know change your belt lot I recommend changing your belt lot probably probably about two I say about two or three years after ownership of the machine plus also you want to uh, keep your deck underneath here as clean as humanly possible because these things do uh, these things do develop a lot of debris that builds up especially underneath here you get a lot of debris build up a lot of debris around in your pulley system right here you get a lot of debris build up and your uh, front area where your transmission is up here as well too. So always maintain your machine. Uh, I personally recommend cutting your yard in the afternoon or early evening when it's dry and your yard does not have a lot of wet uh, grass or dew or anything else on it because if, you've, if you're either cutting your grass when it's uh, you know, like super high and you have a lot of um, water on it, this whole entire transmission area is gonna get packed full of uh, debris underneath here. So just, main, uh, just be mindful of that. Try to maintain your machine as best you possibly can and try to cut it whenever you're specifically uh, in the late afternoon when, it, when, it, when the actual yard is relatively dry in order to uh, prevent and minimize um, all that debris build up on the machine right here for that. This guy, uh, he told me he relatively cuts his yard in the afternoon anyway and he didn't have a lot of debris up underneath the actual transmission units so this area was relatively clean. So we still cleaned it out underneath here. If you want to take the baffle system apart on here, you can do that relatively easy. Uh, you got a bunch of bolts on here. You got one bolt down here. You got one bolt over here, down the bottom here as well too. So you can take this whole back uh, portion off on here, and you'll, you'll be able to take the front uh, baffle system off on here as well too. You can, take the, you can take this plate out of here. You also have. Um, uh, bolts on the front up here as well too to get the front uh, baffle plate out here as well You have a bolt up here It's up behind a transmission right here and you have another bolt over here on the top portion so I think I think they've got four bolts you have two bolts down here And you have two bolts on the top here one and two on here and if you take all four of those bolts off uh, your whole front uh, Drive cover right here. This whole thing just pops right off so you can do that and just clean up the entire uh, portion of that uh, keeper right there as well too and that's how that uh, functions right there as well too so uh, we'll get it and get another uh, better uh, shot from here in the back as well too for the whole entire deck assembly that's what the deck assembly looks like on the Husqvarna machine right here with the all-wheel drive unit this is the newer generation as I said before the older generations do not have uh, this uh, limited amount of covering on here. They do have the uh, portion uh, more covered along here, but uh, apparently they changed the design because it was developing a problem where they had a lot more debris built up inside it. So they changed and really revised the actual design. So now it's more open, so it's easier to get the debris out of there relatively easy. And uh, one thing I also should mention about this machine as well, uh, these pulleys on here, uh, these pulleys do go bad, guys. I had a guy here about a year ago. 
he had a 20, I think it was a 2015 model, I think. I, I can't remember, but I think it was a 2015 model. Uh, if you have one ploy go bad, it's a good idea to replace all three at the same time because, because if one goes bad, the next one's going to go bad, and the third one's going to go bad. So it's always a good idea to replace them all three at the exact same time. You replace one, two, and three at the exact same time because they're relatively cheap, and you don't want them possibly burning up your drive belt on here as well, too. So just keep in mind uh, you do that. Uh, probably maybe about every two and a half, three years, or after whenever it'd be a um, good idea when you're getting your belt replaced. So, me personally, it'd be a good idea to replace your belt and your actual poise right here at the same time because these things do things have bearings on here, and these things do will go bad in maybe about two to three years later. So, always always a good idea to keep these things uh, on spare for your order if you do want to do your own maintenance on your machine. So, we'll go ahead and flip it back up here. <coughs> Put it back down. Get that thing out of the way here. And we'll give you a shot of the side of the deck right here as well, too. There you go. There's a side shot for you. There's a shot for the actual handle assembly right here as well, too. And we'll give you another front shot. And here's your front shot as well, too. We'll give you another shot of the side where the muffler is with your oil dipstick. There you go and upper handle assembly here as well too. Um, I'll give you a shot of the actual dipstick here as well too. People people ask me this uh, sometimes anyway. Um, give your dipstick right here. Uh, in order to check these uh, oil level, uh, whenever you want to check your oil level on a typical Honda one as this one is right here, uh, you want to leave your dipstick not all the way into the thread. You just want to put it in just like this and you want to pull it out and you want to measure your oil level on the actual dipstick. Your oil level should be about a halfway down on the actual dipstick right here. Your oil level should be right about there for your proper oil level on your Honda or Honda clone machine out there specifically for that. So it should be right in the middle of the actual hash, uh, hashtag or hash mark area right here. Your oil level should be right about there. So we'll go ahead and put that back in here and tighten it back down. Make sure it's nice and tight. You don't want the thing blowing off because I had a guy about three years ago, he had a Honda similar to this and apparently his uh, son did not um, torque down the actual uh, threads on here and the thing basically popped off and the guy had oil uh, shooting out of the side of his engine right here and apparently he was running it without actually noticing it and it basically locked up the engine. So always make sure your oil is completely tight on there and nice and snug but you do not want the thing blowing off because of um, uh, you know, not make sure, making sure it's in proper position before you actually start the machine up. So we'll go ahead and uh, fire it up here for you. Your bell control is up here in the back. This controls your engine brake right here. And you have your transmission cable down here as well too. Transmission cables over here with your bell cable on the bottom down here. So this controls your speed of the actual transmission. So we'll go ahead and fire up here for you. So bear with me here for a couple seconds. There we go. My two pulls. When it's cold starting out here. There you go. It's running great. No problems with whatsoever. Nice and smooth. We'll go ahead and engage the transmission unit down here. Okay, here we go. So the transmission's driving okay. Give another shot of that. All right, there we go. Let's try it, try it again here. So the transmission is pulling the okay this machine, so it's basically ready to go back to the customer. Uh, no problems with it whatsoever right now that we've seen. Uh, we did clean it up for him over here because the guy did want it cleaned up as well too after we got the machine tuned up for him as well. So overall the machine is in great shape. The customer did not abuse it and uh, ma they maintain it according to what the manufacturer recommends. So they definitely did a good job on that. And uh, we always recommend you follow the manufacturer's reviews and what the manufacturers should uh, authorize you to do for your machines for the overall safety and functionality of the machines um, 
you know, long-term uh, durability factor right here for that because if you don't maintain your machine, it's going to cost you a lot more in the long run as opposed to simply doing the machine's routine maintenance yourself either for that or taking it to us when you, when you have some kind of a serious problem with the engine or the actual drive unit. So always maintain, keep your machine clean, and do not abuse it out there if you want the most money for your buck out there for your specific machine. So if anybody has any comments, questions, whatnot about this video, this is the Husqvarna L21A. We'll give you another shot of the actual front end here. <coughs> Husqvarna L2, I say L221, sorry about that. I completely forgot about that. L221A. This is the uh, 27 and a half, 20, 2017 or early 2018 model. So that's what it looks like, guys. Anybody has any questions, just give me a message here and I'll call you or I'll, I'll, email, I'll email you back. So have a nice day, guys. I'll see you.